Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Coker-Hook, and welcome to another episode of Conversation with uh, Beth and Peter Bostwick from You Can Choose. If you joined us last time, you know that we started talking about this concept, this really, um, and this, this is nicely stated on the front of their book. It says, life is complicated, but the universe is really simple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and so what we're talking about is how you, as an individual, can take control of the things that go on in your life because you have the capability of controlling how you think, what you think about, and the fact that your thoughts really matter. So, Beth and Peter, welcome back to Reference Point. Well, thank you very much. So, did I say that okay? That I kind of covered it up? Okay, great. So, we recruit you. Uh, for, a, for a seminar leader. <laughs> Very cool. So um, last time we were here, you were telling us a little bit about you guys' background, and you've, you had a business, uh, um, a software business that was oh. going really well, and then things started happening. And um, I thought it was rather interesting, Peter, that um, you were saying that you, you had been moving forward and doing the things that you always thought that you were supposed to do in terms of life and business? I mean, did I interpret that right? Yeah, we both. That's, that's how we've, we thought things were supposed to work. And so one of the things that we were talking about last show was beliefs. And I guess what you're saying is that those were the in inherent beliefs or experiences that were the, the foundation upon which you built whatever the structure was that was your life at the time. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. a accurate yeah. statement and it was based on you know what you read about what you know people you talk to influential people and so forth but your, your parents right parents friends family um, neighbors I mean the things you read about so all those things influence beliefs that you either have or that you form and I think that uh, the the real powerful piece of you can choose is you not only do you choose your thinking but but when you're thinking about what you're thinking about you can start to peel away layers to start to understand what's behind those thoughts mm. and that's where you start to get to the beliefs about things right. so if you you know learn something as a kid um, about money and you know you had to work hard for money then you're gonna always work hard for money it's not gonna ever just show up mm -hmm. so so beliefs like that can be changed that's not an absolute that you have to work hard for money a lot of people believe that but you can choose to think differently now there's a lot of layers to that so mm -hmm. it's not just as easy as okay well I'm not gonna work hard for <laughs> lots of money right. but at the same time it is possible to shift that kind of thinking. So that's why, you know, um, before I talked about, you know, I started working with stoplights and, you know, mm -hmm. trying to think about, you know, it's just going to, they're going to turn green when I get there. They're not mm -hmm. going to stay red and just, and I'll just flow. Same thing with parking places. It's a little easier to deal with something like that than, you know, money is a big complex thing right. for but people. Some of the stuff that I've had the opportunity to read and study in the last couple of years talks about the fact that. And you sort of, I, I'm, I'm going to roll back to you because you have a comment in here that I thought was really good. This is in one of your chapters of your book. It says, there's no judgment from the universe, but rather unconditional love, acceptance, and support. Mm -hmm. The idea here that the universe, in essence, responds to you mm -hmm. as opposed to you being the effect of the universe. Right. And so as you, um, as you think, so shall you be is, is the concept, mm -hmm. right? So... So these sorts of things, uh, I can get a good job, or I can make a lot of money, or I'll meet the woman of my dreams, or whatever it happens to be, are um, perspectives that you can have, you can choose to have, as opposed to, gosh, how come I only meet you know, terrible people, I always choose the wrong gal, or, or I, can't get a, I can't keep a job, or uh, my boss is always a jerk. Those sorts of things are self become self fulfilling prophecies. Exactly. Is yep. what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's, yep. it's the difference between intentionally thinking and automatically thinking. Right. And what happens is those beliefs that we built up over time, like mo money is hard to come by. I have to work hard for it, or whatever it is you have in there, then then feeds into you those those beliefs that that translate into the actions that you take right. and the thoughts that you have. And then, then you're going to get more and more of that. Right. So right. if you switch that around and, and take 
um, responsibility for yourself and intentionally make those those choices, mm -hmm. you'll get a completely different outcome. You know, one of the things I think is real interesting about what we're talking about, and in, in between shows we were chatting about this a little bit, again, the fact that this is not brand new, you know, stuff. Um, it, we, we mentioned um, uh, uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, Dale Carnegie, Og Mandino, James Allen. Um, it's in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the, it's, it's in the Sanskrit. It's just like this is not... Why is it then, if, if we inherently know these truths, why is it that we as a species don't... Um, operate based on these truths. <laughs> that, 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 I don't know that there's an answer. I don't know if yeah. I could try to answer that question here, but it's a question <laughs> worth posing. It is. Because oh, yeah. it's not like we don't know. Right, right. Okay, right. or it hasn't been demonstrated. And it comes up over and over, over and over and over, and over again. again. And well, I think part of it is because we, we all have choice. We can all choose. And so there are certain things that each of us have our own life experience. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. There's nobody here that's the same. So, so bringing all that difference into everything we do and how we conduct ourselves, we have to learn our for ourselves right. because we, right. we can always make choices. The same choice you make in a different situation than I would make are going to have different outcomes. Right, and that's right. okay. It's just nobody's really taken the time to really think about it in, in very simplistic, easy to to replicate ways of doing it. And that's really what we're trying to do with You Can Choose. And that's, I think, takes us back to this uh, perspective of contemporizing these concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, every generation, somebody has mm -hmm. uh, steps forward and says, look, you know, we, we, are, we all used to know this, and let's, let's take another <laughs> look right. at it. Um, <laughs> and, and you guys do it in a couple of ways. You've got a website where there's information on your website. Uh, you do do workshops, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and people can find out about that going up to your website because right. it's published up there. You've got the the publication, the book, and stuff like that, and and I think that that's an important element because it allows people to access information in the way that they're most comfortable with. Exactly, and then they can start to to maybe um, right. to, to uh, think with it. Um, I want to get back to something we sort of, the, the last show we were just ending off with, we, we were talking about how do you help somebody get past that. We, we, we talked about you, when you can reach a point where you can start to, mm -hmm. to look. How do you help people do that? Is, is this the sort of thing, I, roll back. I worked uh, for a while, I, I was involved in a, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation um, service, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I came to recognize and realize is that until that individual had reached a point in their life that it was mm -hmm. as bad as it could conceivably right. get for them, yep. and they realized that they had to do something different, they weren't going to do anything different. Are we talking about the same kind of concept here? Well, you certainly don't have to go that far, right? One of the chapters we have in the book is called Fail in, in Order to Allow. And you don't have to get to the point where you have a failure or some, right. some catastrophe in order to, to prompt yourself to do it. But oftentimes that's what is required, unfortunately, because you've got, like we talked about before, these beliefs that are setting you on automatic pilot. Mm -hmm. You just keep going through your regular day. And you're comfortable there. And you're comfortable you're, with yeah, it. And yeah. in order to shake yourself out of that, you need to have something that happens to you. Right. Right. It doesn't have to be that way, right? Maybe you, you can you know, come to one of our workshops or <laughs> yeah, figure yeah, yeah, things yeah, out yeah. and just yeah. go from there right. and realize that you can make a difference right. to yourself and, and then train yourself to do that. Well, one of the things that um, I think is, is true of any individuals, and you probably saw this in, in the programs that you were involved with there, is some people get hit over the head by a mm. two by four and they get it. Yeah. Other people like me have to get hit by a two by 20 and then they pay <laughs> attention. So you know, some of yeah. us just have to hit the wall harder before we start to say, oh wow, okay, maybe it doesn't need to be like this or maybe yeah. I don't want it to be like this. Right. But what, once you do get to that point where you decide that, you want to make a change, that's when this is, is really very impactful. But you do have to be at that point where you're willing to, to start to really look at those things because it is your choice. It is totally up to you. Um, you know, nobody's going to make 
make you do something. We, we all say you should do it this way or that mm -hmm. way, but at the end of the day, you have that choice. It's up to you. And, you know, Peter talked a little bit about, um, you know, he was a victim for a lot of years. And the what happens when you're a victim is then you can blame other people for oh, yeah, where yeah, yeah. you are. Sure, sure, exactly. But it all goes back to you. And so the choice is really yours if you want to really live a different life or do things differently. It's up to you. And that's great because that's also very empowering yeah. because nobody's going to do it differently if you want to do it yeah, this it's, way, it's, you know? It's both <laughs> scary and empowering at the right. same time. But I think that's an, a, a, the way you express that, Beth, I think is, is something worth it of just a little bit more dive into because you, you can. Um, things are the way they are because you have made choices along the way mm -hmm. that at the time may have been something that you thought you want. Right. We right. were talking about this right. between shows, the right. difference between what you say you want and what you really want. Right. And sometimes you, 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 you take an action in a direction because you, you hope it's going to provide an effect that you kind of want, but the action is not necessarily the one that, and you end up going down a, a crazy, you know, right. dwindling spiral path. So, so let's talk a little bit about the, those different things, what you think you want versus what you really want. How do you, how do you reach that, that aha moment? Sure. So, so when, when folks ask us to, to work with them, one of the first things we ask is, what do you, what do you want, right? And then we don't let them get by with just telling us what they want. We ask, well, why? Why do you want that? Mm. And that seems like a, a simple thing. Right. And then we ask why again, and then we ask why again. Mm -hmm. So because people say things, I want a million dollars, or I want a new car, or I want uh, to marry somebody, or whatever it is that they want. Mm -hmm. But then well, why do you want that? What do you think getting that will do for you? Mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to feel like when you get there? We, we, asking all those questions, you find out that there's a lot behind that, both a lot in terms of what it is that you want, but a lot in terms of why you don't want it, mm -hmm. right? Because we had just had a... That's really powerful. Yeah, we just had an exercise the other day where people were saying, okay, I want this, but then we got down to it. It's like, well, what are the pros of getting it? And what are the cons of it, right? We right. get them to put together a little, a little ledger. Ledger. Right? Uh, here's oh, the, thing, yeah, yeah, here's the things that that you that you think you why the reasons why you think you want this million dollars right. or what, whatever that is. They whatever ask for. it is, yeah. And here's the reasons why you don't want that millions of dollars. And, and in this case, and there to say, well, if I had a million dollars, well, I'll probably have a million dollars of expenses, <laughs> and I'll have all this extra worry. Yeah. And it's like, well, It'll be more stressful. Yeah. yeah. Well, so if you whatever, if, and yeah. if you get in, if you just stay at the million dollars and just you know turn it into an affirmation or whatever, I want a million dollars. I want to be happy about it. Right. You never get to what's in the way of you getting whatever it is right. that you think you want. Because right. there's all there's little beliefs that then start to show up when you go through when you get to the point where you're at that leisure where you've got all the things that you want, right. the, the reasons why you want it, and then the reasons you don't want it. Then yeah. the, some of those reasons that you don't want it might point to, gosh, you know, I really value my family, but if I have a million dollars, then maybe they're going to look at me differently and they're not going to want me. Yeah, so then yeah. all of a sudden, then you start to say, well, maybe I really don't want a million dollars. Maybe right. I want $10,000 or something. You know, it's just, but then you start to moderate, and that's really where the, the power of really understanding uh, the thinking behind what, what it is you want right. that starts to really help you say, okay, well then maybe I need to make choices like this and not like this, like everybody else says I should right. be making them. So both of you have like a uh, technology background, engineering kind of background, is that right? No. 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 I, I do. I'm more of a tech, technologist. Yeah. But I am not. <laughs> I've worked with a lot of them, so I feel like I kind of have an honorary yeah. degree of sorts, but yeah. <laughs> and the reason I ask that question is that here in, in the Valley, mm -hmm. right, where we are, uh, the, um, the engineering mindset, they're very like, you know, it, it has right. to be organized and go this way and, oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and Planner cause, schedulers, an, cause yeah. an effect, yep. Yep. you know. Yep. Is, yep. Is, so how do the engineers respond to this? They struggle initially, but thing, the thing that starts to really help them understand it is when they 
think about the way they think about themselves and then they start to look at what's happening in their life. Mm. It's, it's like, because it's a mirror, right? You know, if you think well of yourself, then you'll draw great things to you. But if you struggle with, you know, having a good self view and just, you know, thinking good things will happen to you and that just isn't, doesn't feel right, then you're going to be drawing a lot of that negativity into your life. I mean, I grew up with yeah. something my mother said, Misery loves company, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and you don't yeah. see miserable people with happy people and vice versa. So it just, when you can start to help people see how they're living their life and what's actually happening and then help them understand how they're thinking, then they start to think, then they start to, to see it. It's what I've heard referred to as the law of attraction. Yeah. Right? That's, You've mm -hmm. got a, a statement in here. The good thing about thinking this way is that you can choose and the downside of thinking like this is that you can't blame anyone. That's right. Nothing happens to us that's not caused by us. It's all on us as an individual. But but mm -hmm. it, the the um, I don't know the term. I'm, uh, I have a term, but it's the wrong one. But but the the thing that that extends out from that is this law of attraction. Mm -hmm. it, and and I think in one way or another, whether we've as a species, these individuals, billion, seven billion individuals, whether mm -hmm. they've uh, acknowledge it or not, you you bring you draw into your experience the individuals and the circumstances mm -hmm. that resonate with what it is that you're thinking. This yep. is an interesting physical universe structure that we're in because it's mm -hmm. all based on you know vibrations and mm -hmm. resonances, and yep. you take a look at atoms and they go down mm -hmm. and it's like everything. Right. And so, and and, and there's that that concept of. Um, what is it? Um, um, uh, in, in, it's, it's in physics. You know, Quantum? No, no, no. The resonance thing was, was something you eat. It's resonance frequency of something, yes. and you hit it, and then oh, yeah, it right. oh, explode. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a resonant frequency for just about everything, and it will bring Absolutely. it into you or whatever. Yep. So I get to tell the people who are, who are watching the show again to don't forget to send us in these queries. This is like um, interesting stuff here. You may not get it just yet, or you may not think it necessarily applies to you, but then again, you may have a question. Send us in your queries at info at referencepointtv.com. We'll get it to Beth and to Peter, and then they can, they can answer your questions and respond to you. Okay, so where do we go from here? Let's see. Um, Okay, let's talk about emotions and how emotions fit, fit into this thing. That was one of the things. You talk about that in your book, too. Uh, emotions are... Um, it's an energy flow. An emotion is an energy flow. Some mm -hmm. are more intense than others, yes, yes. and um, they they come they they and as a flow. It's sort of like an ocean wave. It can be whether it's euphoria or f anger or fear. Mm -hmm. It comes and it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people will tend to want to fight whatever they're feeling. Yeah. But then it becomes what I will refer to as a standing wave. It doesn't go away. <laughs> right. 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 It just right. reinforces right. it. That's right. Wow. It just amplifies right. it. Right. So let's talk about that a little. How, what is your, how, how would you address that within the context of you can choose? So feelings are really, really important. And they are basically a navigation system. It's the way to think about it. So we can think all different kinds of thoughts. We do think all different kinds of thoughts. But thoughts that have emotion attached to them have a greater vibrational quality, if you will. And so when we don't pay attention or we try to ignore an emotion, it just, you know, like you said, it just gets to be bigger and bigger, if you will. It just kind of grows. But if you, if you take the time to think about what's behind that emotion, what kinds of, what's, what's driving this feeling of anger or sadness or fear, and we start to think about what's behind it and pay attention to some of the thoughts that are there, then you start to understand where some of that's coming from. So does the emotion whatever that emotion happens to be, that feeling, it emanates out of, or it, it originates from whatever the experience or the belief is? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, it's usually when emotion happens is when you've got a, a, either a, a, a conflict or a, an alignment, if you will, of your thoughts and your beliefs. Mm. So if you believe 
one thing, and then you want to get, so for instance, worry, right? So worry is a great example. Yeah. So yeah. You, you believe you can't get something, but you want to get something. Mm -hmm. So, or, or you've got a meeting coming up, right? Mm. And you believe that meeting is going to be bad, but you want it to be good, and you don't think there's anything you can do about it. You've got a conflict there between what you believe mm -hmm. and what you think you can do. Mm -hmm. And that generates that feeling of worry. So that's an example of how the two things just They're bunch up to each other mm -hmm. and then it comes out of you. But it's not from someplace else. It comes from what you're thinking and what you're right. believing. You're generating the worry. Got it. That okay. makes sense? Uh, I'm getting there. Mostly, okay. I'm getting there. No, I get the idea of the, um, the conflict between what you think about using the meeting example. Right. Boy, this thing is going to be really rough. But I want it to be really good. But it's going to be really rough. But I want it to be really good. But it's going to be, and it's like, and so you, you, you just kind of like, right, right. Exactly. and then you generate that worry. Right. So, so while I mean, this is what we're talking about, and what we research, and what we do is is nice to know about. But how do you apply it? That's yeah, right. one of the best things That's Beth really... does to me. Is every time I come up with an idea or a concept, <laughs> something. How will this work, Peter? Exactly. <laughs> she, she likes to say, "What's in it for me?" That's right. Right. How am I going right. to use this? So, right. so for instance, and the worry thing is a great thing because we've actually built a little tool called the Worry Buster. Ah. Okay. So the idea behind the Worry Buster is, if you've got a worry, how do you get rid of it? Right. And we've got a tool to do that. Cool. I want to do, uh, touch one other thing. We've got about five minutes left uh, in this show, too. So, and, and that is, um, and, and there's a chapter, in, I think it was a chapter named in here, or, or there's a concept discussed in here about, um, you know, self, me. It's, it, it is about you. Uh -huh. and, and one of the things that is, um, but, but I think when you say it's all about me, uh -huh which life really is because I'm the one who's looking and interacting right. with this universe, yep. you can, you can um, sort of uh, distort that into more of a, um, um, uh, what's, uh, I can't think of the term the right now. Narcissist? Narci yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, yeah, narcissistic okay, yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah, perspective. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm wonderful and it should be, <laughs> and you know, think should be right. about me. Take my picture, do this thing. <laughs> But that's not what it's about. No, no. What it's no, about no. is that the your your ability to control your experience in this plane of existence. It's okay? all about you. And yes. and it isn't what you think about me that nope. matters, or what you think about me matters. It does it's what if I you about. allow it to be part. If, of if what you, you allow it to be right. But it is. It all goes back to you, right. and that's what's so important is that. If you're a victim and just and think, letting things happen to you, or thinking that things are happening to you, you're you're you you feel like you're out of control. Right. But if you just take the step forward and say, okay, I don't have to be a victim. I can take charge of things, and I can start to think about myself in a very empowered way, or more of an empowered way. And you just start with little small things. Right. Then it starts to grow because, like you're talking with law of attraction, you know, you just you a little bit grows and grows, and all of a sudden it's bigger and bigger. I mean, look, you know, it's been three, four years that we've been working on this, but I'll tell you, we were in like the bottom barrel of misery, and I mean, there was no light at the end of the tunnel because there was no end of the tunnel. You know, it was just like, but now it's like we are no longer in a tunnel. Right. We've we've moved ourselves beyond that, but it's been. Solely because we've chosen to think differently about ourselves. Great. So, um, how do people find out about you guys? You have a website, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, we have a website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we put, do you have a um, uh, uh, Facebook page or anything like that? Mm -hmm. have we a have a Facebook page. We've got we've got a meetup that we we yeah. we have been um, just going out there, trying to talk to people about this because we found that you know, we've got posts that we put out there, a newsletter mm -hmm. that people can sign up for. Mm -hmm. Um, but we wanted to start talking to people about this because sure. we're finding that the words are really important for people right. to understand right. and and be drawn into it versus thinking, oh no, because you know we want people to recognize that it's it's all we all do this every day. It's not mm -hmm. like you don't have to do this. It's like right. it's just the way you live your life. It's right. just whether you want to choose to do it intentionally or just you know take what comes. And so we're at the very beginning of trying to get out there and 
and right. get more stuff available to people. Do you have a blog or anything like that? We do. Blog. We have a blog. We post every Tuesday. So right. sign yeah. up for if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll okay. get a chance get the blog. to okay. right. Got right. it. So, right. All right, good. Right. And so um, I think that the thing that people really need to, um, to grasp here is... It, uh, uh, <laughs> I've had the opportunity over mm -hmm. time to talk to people about certain concepts. Mm -hmm. and, um, and some of them get real threatened by the right. thought of change. Right. Okay, and, and so they're, it's like, okay, you're not ready yet, all right? So I think the thing that I really want to, to state here and lay mm -hmm. is that, yeah. uh, is what it is that you guys are doing is a 2019 Silicon Valley-ish kind of a concept <laughs> to approach uh, truths that have been around f for you know millennia. Well, yep. Okay, and and the fact that you have been entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, I mean, uh, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley need to hear about this and yeah. understand it because if you are hoping to make your business successful, right. one of things you need to understand about <laughs> right. how you think about things is going to make right. a difference the way you're successful. So, so I want to thank you for doing what you're doing, and I really Thanks. think it's it's a great thing. And uh, hopefully, the uh, folks who have been watching the show uh, are starting to kind of hmm, think about that, and, mm -hmm. and um, we'll send us in some queries. So, we have like um, 40 seconds left. So, if you have any closing thoughts, anybody you want, either one of you want to toss out in the last uh, now. Uh, 35 seconds. <laughs> well, I think the, the thing that you read in the front of the book is the universe is real, is, you know, our life is really complicated. We make it really complicated, but it's really simple. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, and, and it's been around for years. We just have never paid attention to it. So it's, it's just let go, let allow, go. Let allow. Things flow. There you go, allow. So, Beth, Peter, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys coming and joining us on Reference Point. And, ladies You're and welcome. gentlemen, we'll see you next time. <laughs> thank you.